Hi y'all, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying Burke's Terrible Tentacles It's basically a fly rod tube Right here, it's a, it's a fly rod version of the, the soft plastic Really good for small mouth bass Works for large mouth bass as well Obviously, we can't eat with the fly rod punch mats and all that with it but you can drag it along around cover you can fish it through rocks and all that and it's very very effective as always we'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel get access to the members only content the monthly fly time classes and be entered into the giveaways alternatively you can like the video, share the video, watch all the way to the end, leave a comment, that all helps the channel. So I've got my hook and my vise, this is a Mustard Stinger, uh, 3366, size 2, but use your preferred stinger. Um, I like the shape of this hook for the, f the fly, but it's probably no the, the strongest hook that you could use, but it's fine, there's plenty of hook. And I'm going to lead it um, with some O3O lead wire. Just lead that about 15 wraps. But you can lead it as heavily or as lightly as you wish. Right, it's up to you. I'm going to start some Uni 6 oak and olive just to match the colour that I'm tying. And run up, jam the lead, take a few wraps through it, and then just for a wee bit added security so that nothing can spin or twist, get some super glue in there. Get the thread to the start of the bend. And then I'll just run through this a couple of times again so you've got a really good strong base to tie your fly on and I'll just get a wee quick wipe to knock away any excess so it will no stick your fingers um, if you're quick legs I'm going to take a spinner bait skirt or a jig skirt right I buy these at the at the bass shop um, I mean it's just the same as your silly legs I'm going to cut it in half because that's plenty for a single fly and then the length that I'm going to have over the back will be like about a hook length so we'll just come in and mark that with a thread see where it's sitting kind of rock it around now that we're now that we're in I'll just take that tab away. Let me turn that a wee bit shorter. And then I can sort of let it find where it wants to sit. Just as you go with your thread, you can sort of turn it and see where the legs are going to lie. And they won't fight you. Right? If you're if you're trying to push them too much you'll be fighting them all the way, just let them go and then when they're sitting you can have a wee last check gather these up and I don't need to be very fussy I'm just going to get these locked down as an underbody cover everything up come to the back and I don't want to put too much pressure 
on the legs. I don't want them flaring, right? I want them to sort of want to stay relatively close together. Then I'm going to get some really bugger chenille. You can use any type of sort of crystal chenille, estas, whatever you want. Something with a wee bit of sparkle. But honestly, I don't think it's that important what you use. Um, it's just you're given the colour. And then I'm just going to use my rotary for this. I'm taking this back turn. Making sure it's nice and straight, again sort of gathering them and then just come forward, making your underbody. When you get near the, the head, you can tie it off. Come on with the heavy scissors, this stuff's quite tough, which is why I like it. It's very durable. That um, really bugger you know, it's all synthetic. And I'm going to just wrap back, give myself a decent head length of say an eye length and a half, and then. I'm going to get some fleece, right? You could use something else. You could use the EP fibre or something, I suppose, but the wool, sort of, especially in the water, it gets a bit translucent. It's got a wee bit of movement, but it does seem to kind of bind and adhere to the, the body in some way when it's wet. Again, making it look like the gear, the gear angler's tube, or tube, I suppose, if you're North American. Anyway, so I'm going to have a wee look at this before I even cut it off the, the skin. I'm just seeing how much I've got and I want like enough to sort of go halfway around. I'll come in and I'll cut it right close to the hide. And then I just sort of, to make sure the straight edge comes away, I'll get a wee tear. Pull it through itself, and that means I've got two kind of rough ends. Perfect. And then I'll offer it on my side, and I'll just use my thumb to spread it so that I'm getting like a wee cloak. Just grab that, take a turn or two, and then take that side. I've mis misjudged my length there, so I'll just take it off. Try that again. Better. Should be. Right. And then same again. I'll just do the same thing again. I'll just push it through over the eye. And then that will come back and give me a nice wee cloak around that chenille body. And it's very reminiscent of the way a tube, a tube looks. Um, like a wee finesse tube for small mouth. This is very close. And it acts fairly similarly in the water as well. Um, you know, it just lies there. You get a wee pull. It moves, every, you know, but the, the legs and all that sort of stay together reasonably well, swim as one. They're no wiggling about too much, which is, I actually think, quite a good thing. Now, if any of that fleece is fuzzed up in your eye, just, just come in with a lighter to clean that up. And then you need some kind of weed guard or rock guard or whatever. Um, I mean, if you're fishing this in the rivers, you know, you're no, it's less likely to be grass and all that, um, which is where I would usually fish this, especially this time of year when they're 
looking for maybe a slightly bigger crayfish. Um, this can be very good. So I'm just going to use the double prong, but I'm going to fold it over so that it's got a bit of grass capability. So three in front, three behind, pull it down, and then as usual sort of figure eight through them. Just to separate them. Have a wee look from the front, make sure they're sitting how you like. And when they are, you can put a couple of wet finishes on. The last thing what, I've, what I'm going to do for the weed guard is bend it. So I'm going to come in, take the first one. Make sure you're below the hook point. Just bend that. And don't worry too much about the, the angle at this stage. Just do the same again, get your wee kink in. And then I like to take it out of the vise. And I'll take the... I'll trim this a wee bit, wee bit long. Turn that off. And then I'll take the, the plier and put the nylon right along the along the jaw and sort of kink it and push forward, push towards the hook eye. And that'll give you a nice a nice guard. Same on this one. And you can take your time with this, get get it how you like it, or use a different type of weed guard that's entirely up to you. But I feel this is plenty. It will turn the fly over a boulder, it will push a bit of grass out of the way. It's not as weedless as a loop, you know, like a, a, sprung, a spring loop, but it is very good at not impeding hookups which a lot of people do worry about with weed guards. But anyway, there you go, that's Buck's Terrible Tentacles. I hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you give me a like down below, and we'll see you for another video. Take lines guys, bye.